Okay, uh, I don't know why my screen is not showing up. Uh, give me a moment. Yeah, music. Okay, uh, uh, how many of you were here last year for a geek camp? Can you remember my last year's persona? Uh, running a tire. What? Running a tire. Yeah, running a tire. I was a running man, uh, so this year I'm Mario. Okay, so my name is Mario. Uh, Ning Jin is my evil uh, twin. He works for this evil company. I was late because I was stuck in the sewer for a while. That Princess Daisy, uh, asking for it. Uh. Every time uh, she is safe at home, uh, she must go and dispel that, uh, that dragon thingy. Uh. Then I must go and save her from the castle. So I got stuck, that's why I'm dead. Okay, so uh, today, right, uh, I'm supposed to share with you uh, three things only. Uh. It's called um, it's called the, the data services, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, a lot of things I'm going to tell you, right, um, it's really my own personal opinion. Uh, it doesn't reflect on any, uh, you know, uh, Nintendo or any other company I'm related to. Okay? Sorry, I need, I need to interject at this point. Yes. We are not streaming to upstairs yet. Okay. You... So right now, uh, uh, they claim that I'm not streaming to upstairs, so let me share my screen. Yes. So by right upstairs can see what I see here. Okay, are we good? Yeah, voice connection. Okay. Ah. Streaming not working. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so uh, don't worry, we have another uh, software. Yeah, okay, it's called Skype. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the tricky part is um, where is my other Skype? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I uh... okay, go for it. Okay, this is getting a bit tricky. Uh. So uh, while, while getting all these technical things to uh, get up and running, while running, right? I'm gonna ask you a question. What is my real profession? Plumber. Plumber. All right, plumber. So my question again uh, is that uh, what does uh, data services and plumbing got in similar, I mean, in similar nature? I mean, how is it even related in the first place? Ow. It is not a dirty job. <laughs> it lets data information flow. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, so while well, I want to tell you a lot of things, uh, let me get start with some sorry darling first. Uh. How many of you heard about this uh, project in verse ORG? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nimbus, the for short. <coughs> yeah, so uh, one of the things that I do in my free time, right, where I'm not writing evil reports or uh, doing spreadsheets, right, uh, is this uh, data as a service project uh, that started back in 2009. So uh, we are very commun I mean, a connected city nowadays. So all, the, all those people with a smartphone now, please take out your smartphone, hit this URL, project nimbus.org. <laughs> okay. What? Can you try something? The page you see the blog is still there. The data services, I'll explain to you what's happening right now later, okay? So if you go and look into the blog right now, right, you see a video streaming, you can see my evil brother Luigi there. Alright, there's a video that tells you, I mean, tell you what this project in verse and there's a guy wearing a green top now. So that's my brother, my ugly brother. What's your Skype ID? Okay, uh, so project Nimbus, right, well, it started is because uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting... Let me tell you a story, uh, okay? Um, yeah, this is a bit distracting because of that funny sound. How many of you consider yourself an innovator? A geek? Someone who actually creates software? Okay, very good. Uh. If you don't consider that, then are you sure the right camera? This is not possibly camera. Okay? So as innovator, right, one thing that we do and do very well uh, is really called uh, writing software. And why do we write software? Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Is it okay? I can't decide. Is it the next uh, room right? Joyce, looking okay. at what we screen here, or we <laughs> looking at this lady there? <laughs> <laughs> don't tell her. Don't tell her. Anyway, uh, okay. for those who doesn't know this lady, right? She okay. is not Princess Daisy, uh, but uh, <laughs> she is known as a uh, Joyce, and she runs called Gig Girls. Uh, I strongly encourage all ladies to go and reach out to her and see what uh, interesting things she's been doing. Okay. Okay. And finally, I think uh, I'm up and running. Now I'm just gonna like uh, minimize this. Can I? I am not muted. Okay. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Okay, whatever. <laughs> All right. Finally, I get to show you what I want to show you. Yeah, I only got four slides, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to expand my, I mean, uh, full screen uh, just in case. Uh. Okay. So the first slide uh, is called Data Services. So the good thing you need to know, right, is that this is the good guy. <laughs> All right? And this is the bad guy. And you know who's the ugly one? My brother. <laughs> okay? No, uh, so um, one of the things that I don't like to do uh, over the weekend is to do the things I do on every other day, which is doing presentation, writing Excel, especially replying email. So I want to make this uh, sharing uh, as uh, what that? interactive as possible. So for those of you uh, who are hardworking, uh, you already know, you already tried going to this URL. Uh, so I'm just going to um, hit it and show you what you're going to see there. Okay, the key thing you need to remember is called Project Nimbus, the ORG. Okay, uh, this is what we have. And as I was saying, right, my evil brother Luigi is this guy. Okay, but it's very orange in this. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I'll uh, go back to my story again. We're all innovators here. We like uh, writing software. And the question is, why do we write software? For fun. That's why we're here. Okay, what's the second reason? Money. Uh, money. What's the third one? <laughs> the most important one. Make our lives simple. That is a good aspiration. <laughs> what? Anyone? Check out the uh, big cam. Yes. Automation. Automation. That's part of the party. Because button. we can. Because, because we, can. we can. Correct. <laughs> Right. Right. So that was the main motivation why we started Data as a Service, okay? But to give you a context again, what are some very important things that happened between uh, 2005 or after 2005, 2006? What are some of these uh, major innovation or uh, market trend we have in our world? Say again? Cloud is number one, correct? What's the other thing? Mobile. What? Mobile. Mobile. Exactly. So let's fast, no, backtrack again to earlier 2000. How many of you remember this company called StreetDirection.com? <laughs> Alright, they're still around, okay? Then, uh, but then, I mean, in between 2000, they thought there's something called GoDad.sg. Uh. Let's start with StreetDirection.com. Why was StreetDirection.com famous, remember them, and successful with what they're doing? Free maps. They have maps, okay? But what is maps? What exactly does maps give to us? Are we interested in all the uh, blue color, green color? Your Mac Golf Romeo for the guys here, Mac Golf Romeo, one, two, three, six, four, five, seven, eight. Uh, sorry, who are the Singaporean guys who serve NS before here? <laughs> okay, so you know what I mean, right? Mac Golf Romeo. I mean, all those things, right? All the, all the blinky red color patches, blue color patches, right? It's actually what we call data, all right? Data, this is the whole thing, data. Uh, most of the innovation, most of the software we do, right? My teacher always say, uh, remember, there's only two things you learn for your four years computer science degree. Part one, algorithm. Part two, data. All right? So we automate something that's a useful to automate something, right? It's always about moving data and automating certain things. And that's what software is pretty much uh, most of the time about, OK? And going back to the street directory.com, uh, very successful for the point of time. But only way, the only way, I mean, they are earning money uh, via uh, certain ads, uh, but that's a different story. But here's the problem, uh. so Street Directory very happy. They go and map out the whole Singapore. They put it on this uh, bottle, then you want to go Gilang, you search Gilang, and then it show you the map. <laughs> then you say you want to go Jurong, you search Jurong, it show you the map. And then after some time, what happened? What was the big fiasco they had? Copy and Huh? Copy and Copy and 
Copyright issue. Copyright issue, very good. So there's this very evil, okay, not evil, but this is government, Singapore government, you know who they are. There's this agency, I don't want to mention the acronym, I don't want to mention the full name also, but there's a letter A, there's L and S. Okay? There's a few, I mean, there's only six presentations, you go figure it out. This particular agency, right, decided to say that, hey, speakdirectory.com, I think you infringe a bit of my copyright. So that is where pretty much the business went down here. But somehow, uh, then you got speed on now, go there to SG. I, that, they have no problem with SLA. I don't know why, but that's a different story. <laughs> so come back to streetdirectory.com itself. I think one of the things that you're doing those in 2005, mid-2000s, right? A lot of us want to do, right, is that what if I can pull all the data, map-related data regarding your lab long coordination, and not only finding out the nice map where they are, but if I can find out what are some shops around me, what are some of the uh, things, events, or people around me, can I present it in some kind of useful software? Okay, so that was a context back in mid 2000, and then you throw in devices uh, like uh, what I call iPhone or whatever phone that that uh, the phone by this uh, fruit company. <laughs> okay, and then so uh, there's a lot of context whereby you know people are realizing there's a lot of data that people are collecting, but somehow we're not able to piece and mesh it up. So the motivation for what we want to do, right, is to really create, liberate the data, make it available via API, make it available via web services, and then therefore that's how we started in the 2009. So the context again uh, is that, uh, why do I use this analogy? Uh? It's because uh, sometimes uh, I really think that writing software in the, in the weekend, if you all hang out with those guys at Hackerspace, right? It's like whipping up the dish. If I want to cook chicken rice right now, what do I do? Buy rice. I don't cook chicken. Uh. <laughs> I'm not I'm a popular, I'm not like, okay. <laughs> So most of the, most probably, right, is that you will go to the uh, supermarket, then you go to the hour and you pick up a chicken. The day one already killed, processed already. You don't need to yourself. You pick up some rice, you pick up some of your spring onion, some garlic, some ginger, uh, pandan leaf as well, chili, and those stuff. Uh. Okay, so you have all the ingredients that pick up from a supermarket. Then you go home, uh, do your secret magic, whatever not. And then finally, uh, two or three hours later, right, you pull out a mess, you present chicken rice. So the idea, we want to think of like uh, when we create software, it's like cooking like that. If I want to create an app, right, that lets me go find out uh, who is the previous girl attending a gig camp right now, right? I can ask the previous girl to put up your hand, but she'll be most probably too shy. Or I can write an app to you know, solve it. But in order to write the app uh, to solve who's the previous girl in gig camp right now, right? First, I must find out who are the people attending gig camp. I'm not sure, but if let's say Eventbrite, Eventbrite is an API that I can pull out the uh, people attending and has a check in, right? Then there's one API I can pull from already. And then uh, most probably, um, if let's say the Facebook, uh, last time the app called Hot, Hot or Not or something like that. Okay, so if I can pull the list of people right now in GeekCamp, and then I cross match it right with the hot or not uh, review, I can kind of like find out who's the hottest person who's physically here at GeekCamp right now. So you get my point, right? So uh, what Project Nimbus seek out to do, or we tried to do, right, was to really present a one-stop information, a one shop, where uh, people can just sign up, get an API key, and then we try to get as much uh, data we can uh, give out uh, during that uh, point of time. I mean, give out data. So uh, if you look at this uh, really outdated uh, portal, right, um, you can see that we actually managed to pull quite a fair bit of data, even from uh, people who may not be there anymore. So anyone still remember this very awesome company called Chopbot? Yep. 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 Okay, Lawrence was working there for a while. So what they do is actually offering you right, the latest promotion happening at any location. Okay, they are like a mobile advertising. Uh, we had cinema <coughs> online. So uh, they are still streaming some of their cinema data. La. At what cinema showing, what show, at what time. Okay. We also pull data for Hungry Go Where. They happily supply us the data la, until they decide to get back bought over by another evil company. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you who are next month, if you pay double your uh, data plan, right, you know who. Uh. <laughs> okay. So after uh, Hungry Go Back cannot bought over by Singtel, that's it. They stop buying data to us. <laughs> then uh, the next one is actually LTA. Wow, that's what another story. Very, very long. But LTA actually gave us, right, at what location, no, wrong. at any one time, right, what is the uh, road that um, have at any one time, what are the road segments in Singapore, right? And what is the average speed of a traveling vehicle? That one, damn awesome. And then I have NEA, uh, this one, a bit tricky. Uh, they give me what is the current, uh, what called the cast. That means right now across uh, like uh, 20 over location, 20 over location in Singapore, right? What is the current weather? But if you notice, right, at this office right now, I look out the window, right? I can see all the way to uh, Changi. Uh. <laughs> so I don't know why I need to take out an app to check the weather. Uh, okay? <laughs> National Library, they also give me access to a certain like catalogs, what are the books available, whatever not. 
And then uh, somehow some people got very excited uh, and I whacked, I whacked the uh, API server too much, they decided to close connection to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, further up, who else do I have? Let me see. Uh, at some point of time, I also had shown nearby collaborating with us. So they really gave me a what is the nearest 7 uh, Eleven around me. But then again, uh, the sad story is the same uh, is that uh, they got bought over by another company. It's not red, it's not green, it's not blue, but the other color pages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Shell nearby got quiet, that's why I got no more data from them. And uh, Singapore's, oh no, Singapore Tourism Board, that's not quite happening. Uh. Uh, but um, yeah, they wanted to join with us, right? Because uh, back in year 2009 or 2010, anyone can remember a very interesting inaugural uh, event happening in Singapore? Huh? You for the very good, bro. You're really a uh, true blue Singaporeans, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe okay. Yeah. So but anyway, you for the So they want to collaborate with us, uh, so they actually uh, created a catalog. Catalog of all the uh, exciting places to go in Singapore, and uh, they kind of like uh, hosted as data service. Uh, after tourism board, we had sync post. Uh, so before um, the what call it, the postal code transcribers API you get from this other search company. Uh, uh, we actually have those uh, those those uh, what call it uh, transcoding uh, API whereby you give me your let long, I'll return you uh, I'll return you a postal code. Okay, you or you give me a postal code, right, I'll return you an address. So that one is actually uh, provided by sync post. Uh, at one point of time, right, we actually tried to do some uh, user-created content. Uh. So that time, someone uh, very nice, some students from uh, Tamasic uh, Poly, right, they actually go around Singapore uh, late at night, and then they came back with a list of uh, places you can have supper for 24 hours in Singapore. Okay, And last one is uh, places like SG, which is spin off from uh, Hungry Go Wear and this other company, 2359, I think. The, the, okay, uh, but it's just showing you where all the retail places are. Uh. So uh, from a list there, which uh, most of the data is a bit dead at the moment, right? At one point, uh, at the height of our project, we have more than 50 over data sets. Okay? I'm going to do something that's very ugly. Uh. I'm going to show you uh, how, how we know uh, who is actually pulling what. Okay? So like all uh, portals, right? We will create something called the admin console. Let me try to remember my admin password. <laughs> Project, uh, I forgot already. So when <laughs> okay, cool, Q. So yeah, this is um, I mean uh, for those that use project numbers before, right? Uh, you can register a key every time you all actually pull for a certain data we have, right? Uh, we actually kind of lock how many times you called us and how many uh, data items we return you. Uh. So, uh, because it's a weekend project, you notice a lot of things are done in a very uh, minimalistic, old school style. Uh. Probably work with IE6. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, let me show you, uh, since the beginning from uh, maybe, uh, let's start with uh, 2010. It's so primitive, right? I don't have a UI to drop down the uh, calendar. <laughs> Let's say 2010 uh, until now. Uh, let me just go and see uh, how many data items have I written. Uh. Okay, one of the things uh, I need to mention is that it's been a long ride. So like I said, right, at the peak of our, uh, uh, I mean this project, we have 50 old data sets, which is all live, live data, live feeds and everything. We had uh, more than uh, 800 over uh, keys being issued to people, and we served many, many uh, millions of records. So one of the problem over four years, right, that I haven't figured out, right, is that uh, we serve so much, I mean, we dish out so much, uh, every time you make a transaction, we actually keep a lot of it. So right now what's happening on the back end, right, is that they're trying to pull all the different uh, numbers of uh, queries and made for the last four years. So you can see, uh, one of the most da uh, popular data set I have is actually traffic condition. I mean, everything speaks for itself. La. So you can see that uh, for different kind of data, I have different number count. The one that nobody wants is actually private resident property price. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the most popular, anyone can help me see which is the most popular data set I have? 
incident set. 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 Incident Raining or very hot, <laughs> but forecast right? Forecast uh, they also have fifty four million um fifty more uh, yeah, okay. So uh, okay in total uh, for last four years right we have uh, dish out we have served how many queries uh, uh three hundred and fifty three million queries uh, for the last four years uh. So uh, at this point of time right while the project's not exactly alive it's a bit dark. I just want to give a round of applause and thanks right, to all the uh, community people who help about it, help us and talk about it. So uh, this is what we have done so far. Um, just want to show you some of the admin stuff we did also. I mean, uh, one of the problems that we try to solve right, is that getting data right, consists of a few phases. Uh. Number one is that there's a lot of data being amassed by various uh, companies, be it government, I mean, you see government like uh, LTA, whatever, right? And then you have any who, they have the data sitting at some server somewhere, rotting away, collecting dust, all right? But then in making it available to the public, right, they always question, hey, if everybody whack my server, how? Uh? Then, uh, of course, um, that's the other thing I say, uh, that factor in cloud computing. So what we did is actually data still maintain one copy at the, um, the what we call the data source, wherever agency or government or uh, those um, hungry go-where places. Then we set up a web servers, right, on the uh, cloud platform itself. Then we just every five minutes or 15 minutes, depending on the uh, frequency you de decide by the uh, data source, we just pull over, cache it on our web server, and then we stream it downhill. Okay, as more people collect the uh, data, right, uh, we also realize that uh, initially we have two web servers, the load balance. So anytime uh, one, time, uh, one server go down, right, the other server will still maintain and we, we try to restore the server. After some time, right, we got a bit smarter. Uh, we decided to use this uh, web platform to service kind of um, approach. So the uh, data centers will do the uh, magic for us. Anytime one server go down, right, you'll spin up a new server to maintain it. And then we uh, load balance uh, the two servers and we also kind of like, um, yeah, it's load balance. But then, uh, all, all the technical people, what do you think is the problem you have when you have this kind of approach? We are load, you know, load balancing across the different web servers. I think I'm all you guys ready. Okay, that is the first time uh, where we talk about, you know what, uh, usually when we spin up one single server, one connection, one session, right? The user supply, se uh, supply the session key and then whatever parameters, and then um, you, you return the result. Uh. But when you have, uh, two servers or multiple servers load balancing, right? What happens if, let's say, you have one, one session, the user make a query, right? Before he can actually finish the query already, right? Then uh, you kind of like uh, go go quiet for a while, and then he make he reconnects the session, but got pointed to another another web server, lah. So one of the things that actually resulted the uh, uh, mean uh, understanding or realize that whatever we need to do, right, with all this kind of uh, scalable web services, right, is to do a web for a stateless design. So your session, right, your session for all these queries or all this web API, HTTP call, right? should not be kept in memory. Like. As much as possible, you need to use other mechanisms. Okay, this is going to be boring and very dry, but those who are interested can find me later. Okay, so that's the first thing we learned. And after that, of course, okay, for people like the Hungry Go Where, uh, they ask me, hey, I give my data, how, uh, how, uh, how I make money? Uh? Okay, that one, uh, not the worst one. You know who's the most, uh, the most jalat conversation I have? Uh? LTA. LTA. <laughs> okay, any one of you actually tried using LTA and asked them for data before? Okay, what's the experience looking like? You get what? You get Delta every day. That one actually not the pain there. You actually still get Delta. How long do you actually talk to them before you actually get anything? Okay, and what question do they ask you? Okay, this one I'm off the record, please. Uh, because here I see. Uh. Okay, whatever said, uh, it's actually Mario. Uh. Mario said, not me. Uh. So uh, not, not just LT, la, but usually government, uh, they are a bit more uh, conservative. La. So when, when uh, the government uh, say they want to give out data, right, they always ask who is the data going to and what is the data using for. Okay? So one of the challenges we had, or one of the, or the ideas or vision we had right, is whereby developers come in, you just uh, register for a key, then you just put in your email, uh, and then we send a verification email. We know that you're a real person, you're not a bot, we just uh, give you back a key. But LTA do one. I want these guys to register with me. They want to write down exactly what they're using the API for. And uh, only if I approve of their application, right, then I give them data. Okay? Trust me, man, I have a lot of uh, challenges convincing them otherwise. 
No, my point is, I mean, hear me out. This is what I think. You all can choose to agree or disagree. We all innovators here, all right? If we have idea, we can really make something innovative, right? Do we want to wait for people to give me permission to write something or not? <coughs> right? So, yeah, I mean, here's the funny thing. Uh, government say it must be innovative, but then again, uh, they want to... <laughs> <laughs> government say they are a very supportive one. But they still want us to uh, de decide which one is the right innovation, which one is the wrong innovation. But how? Cannot, right? So, I want to show you uh, some of the this email correspondence. Uh, but one of my most heated discussion I have with them uh, is that they say that after uh, running uh, two, three months of uh, Nimbus data with us, right, they say they want to close it. And I say that why? They say they don't know where the data is going. And then, because some of their other partners are uh, like some. Uh, I don't want to mention things again, uh, but, but they kind of like talk on television screen and tell you the uh, traffic condition <laughs> through the television. <laughs> so there are some other partners who actually license the use of information like via, the web, I mean, via those old school media. Uh, and they are, those old, old school media people are not too happy about it. So they say uh, we need to uh, curb or we need to uh, think of more uh, measures to manage the people using data in this manner. And so they ask me, hey, can I just give like uh, one hour of data data? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to find out whether AYE got jammed one hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> then they asked me, uh, can I uh, like maybe, you know, I, I for this one is like a testing purpose. It's what I call a free trial data. I will update it only half an hour. Every half an hour, I'll give you an update. Uh, maybe uh, they are restricted to only one portion of Singapore, maybe CBD. <laughs> so as a developer, even I try uh, creating a solution, right? Uh, if my user use my app, the user is at CBD, uh, then his app can work. <laughs> and the user use it only half an hour, once every half, half an hour. <laughs> I don't know, uh, I don't know. Uh. But subsequently, right, LTA right, decided to uh, spin up their own uh, what I call data mall. Uh. So if you go to uh, this uh, mytransport.sg or datamall.mytransport.sg, right, they are trying to do their own data services again. Uh. But um, just to let you know, uh, uh, most of the whatever, you'll find there's a lot of similarities between the API that you use with uh, Project Nimbus and data.mall, I mean sorry, data.mall.mytransport.sg But whatever sucky uh, uh, quality you have over there, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, we did the POCs, we dropped out, I mean what we really do is that all these collaborators, uh, I mean uh, whatever we're doing with them, we show them, uh, we show them uh, what, how do we approach it, how do we architect some of the web services and everything. And to some extent, right, we give them a baseline of a stable code. Stable means the API is somewhat stable, uh, um, but I don't know what they do with it. Uh. Just to give uh, those who doesn't know what I mean, uh, to give a few of what we actually gave out to some of these data owners, right? Let me show you one of the things that I don't show often. It's called the backdoor. Oops. So I keep on talking about API and, uh, and web service, right? Let me just show you one of the tools that we created, one of our uh, debugging tools. Uh. So of course, for those who actually got an account key, right, you can happily just put account key and you can get something there. And for those who actually, and for people who actually use uh, Project Nimbus before, right, we actually uh, require two items uh, to actually let you, uh, in order for us to authenticate who you are, and then uh, let you get, um, get, get the data. Lah. So one is account key, that's called a UUID. Lah. I'll tell you why later. So um, for very lazy purpose, I mean people usually like to create a very short account key for themselves for easy debugging. All right, and uh, we always create tools for us to debug, debug our own uh, data service. Lah. So if you actually, uh, anyone got your uh, console open up right now, right? If you actually do uh, a, curl, uh, a, curl, uh, a curl request with uh, account key called uh, whatever your account key is and your UUID, right? You're actually able to get a, 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 a so, sorry, a XML, a atom, a atom based XML kind of a response, uh, telling you a lot of details. Uh, huh? So this is uh, pretty much what we have put. Lah. So one of the things that we actually did also, because uh, it's like we realized there's a lot of interesting uh, location-based data, but one of the things that you want to know is not really what you have. What, I mean, you do really want to know all the restaurants in Singapore. You just want to know the restaurants near you. So one of the innovation or one of the things we did previously, right, was that if you were to throw in a, a let long, as part of query, right, you throw in the let long uh, coordinates of where you are now, right, you will actually kind of like, um, you know, do a search and then uh, only return you back the, the restaurants that's around your locality. Uh. So this one is a bit wide. Uh. So what it means is that my current location is uh, latitude 1.3, longitude uh, 103.86. It's actually quite close to my office here. And then we're in a distance of uh, 2,000 meters. Uh. That means two kilometers, right? These are all the restaurants around me. So if I want to reduce the uh, radius of search, right, I just reduce over here. Okay. So when we did this uh, location-based kind of uh, features for the web service, right, one of the things we learned uh, is that actually A-level or F-maps is very important. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, in Singapore, there's A levels, advanced levels, and this is called advanced mathematics, FMENSA. Because uh, one of the things we realize, right, some government agency, I don't want to mention it again, okay, all their uh, um, geography, right, is all encoded in something called uh, Survey 21. <laughs> Anyone heard of Survey 21? Yes. Okay, for those who does, I'm sure you've done a lot of uh, GIS, whatever, la. but it's just another okay, datum, okay? But most of us, are uh, we use that long. If, in fact, most of your uh, maps provider, be it uh, Google Map, Bing Map, whatever, right, use that long, right? But all the government data for the location, right, encoded into uh, Survey 21. And in order, uh, to, in order to actually translate Survey 21 uh, coordinates, right, into that long itself, right, we have to use a lot of those hyper cosine or uh, hyper sine. You know, when you do the cosine, uh, COS with the H behind, okay? So if you haven't done those things before, right, most probably it means you haven't done FPETs in A level. Okay, but anyway, we went, we also spent a period of time uh, translating all this uh, government um, location into a uh, normal let long walk. So this is what we have. Okay, uh, in the interest of time, I just want to share with you uh, right now why I thought it was an interesting thing to come back to community here is because uh, a lot of the uh, interesting learnings we have is really because uh, you guys are helping out. Uh. And one of the things we also identified um, is that over the last couple of months, right, couple of I mean the last one year, we have also added a lot of uh, people like, um, what's the name? Up, Up Singapore. Anyone from Up Singapore is here today? Okay, uh, Up is a UP, uh, UP Singapore. It, it's a, a community where they try to actually get people with data to open up data for like over three days and do a weekend hackathon for you trying to solve their data problem, right, with smart people like you. Uh, but it's also very really ridiculous. The yeah, other condition uh, is that uh, you go and join their weekend uh, hackathon, right? And then that data will be made accessible to you locally in their premise during the three days. And then uh, subsequently, you have no more data. <laughs> Unless they like your app a lot, uh, then they'll have some other plans for you. And then there's another uh, data movement, right? It's called a DAX, a data exchange group. Uh, somewhat related to IDA also and uh, EDB. Uh, I don't know what they're doing, but they claim their data exchange platform only come online this month, end of this month, or next month. So that's another interesting thing. Another one of the conversation we had also was with data.gov.sg. Anyone use that site before? Okay. Now, data.gov, uh, it sounds very interesting, uh, but the only thing you're locking right now at the moment, right, you see your catalog. A catalog of all the places where you can download your Excel spreadsheet or PDF. <laughs> okay. So we also have an ongoing conversation with them. And then data.gov actually makes some uh, interesting um, uh, advancement. Uh. So they actually decided to talk to I IDA and want to do a data as a platform kind of marketplace. So IDA decided to spend the last uh, couple of one, two years, right, writing all the uh, data service standards, blah, blah, blah. So if you're interested, right, there's actually uh, something called a uh, 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 technical reference for uh, data service. You can go to this link. Oops, I didn't save. Okay, never mind. You just go and search uh, for this uh, technical Reference 33 at Singapore standards. Then you can see all the other what all the data service API must be HTTP a RESTful base. It can either return you an Excel, I mean XML response, or return you a JSON response. Then it must take in, it must do a what kind of security check via a certain token or OAuth parameter. I don't bore you with details, but then um, just go and read up what all this ID people are doing well. So I know I'm the only reason. Uh, I mean the only reason keeping you between you and lunch. So I just want to end off somewhere around here. Um, the landscape for Singapore right, for data versus for your law right, is very, very different. Okay? But one thing also that we learned that I want to share with you right, is that while well, back end uh, data is going to move around, a lot of people have data, it's good to have data. Uh, the front end part is always constantly changing. Uh. So what we saw right, on the front end is that while we are doing all this data API, people are writing iOS apps, iOS version 1. Uh, they're going to release iOS version 7 soon. And then you see Android going through all the jelly beans, whatever not. Okay, for my first version. And then of course this other company that I somewhat affiliated to, right, has been building a lot of different versions of their phone. La. <laughs> <laughs> Moral of the story, if y'all cannot remember, okay, remember Mario tell you this, uh, Mario is a bumbler, Mario cannot be wrong. Okay. Um there's a lot of uh, data around in Singapore. Okay, but the data is not exactly liberated. Okay, and what uh, we should be doing, right, or what we want to do more, right, is where, how can we connect the data, make it available to developers like you, and, and uh, so that you all can build interesting uh, applications here. So I uh, remember, remember, if you have to build any innovation, you have to, to build any of your software, right, just know that the data bumbling is always the hardest, but you will stay for a long time. Because all your uh, front end clients, right, your mobile phones, your smartphone, right, the different versions will come and go. Okay, HTML5 will come and go. 
with HTML6. Your uh, smartphone iOS 7 will come and go with iOS 8. All right? But if you build a solid uh, backend data services or backend web services, right, those are going to stay for a long time. Okay? So, before I jump off, right, I just want to go off with one more message. Um, I, me and my evil brothers, whatever not, lah, we are been thinking because uh, a lot of our previous agreement with data owners have uh, run dry already, expired. So we're actually thinking about how we want to do our iterate uh, project university version 2 whatsoever. Uh, I actually had a demo, but uh, it's not, it broke, lah. I'll fix it. But the next version, what we think of, right, is not so much about big boys with the data making available, but how about uh, users, right? People like yourself, geeks, normal geeks, right? We have an Excel spreadsheet, we have a common separated value, a CSV a CSE file, one. we just upload it, and then we can publish it into data service for you. So we got our first couple of iterations up and running already. Lah. But then again, uh, the thing is that we don't know what the future is. I came here just to share with you what we have. And um, I just want your feedback. If you all like what you all see today, right, just go to projectnimbus.org. And then I know I don't have, a, I will not be dating a meeting list properly in our base or so. Lah. But make sure you just register yourself for a key. You will actually pop up a form out whereby they ask you for your name, your email address. And then uh, that is our, our current master list of all the people subscribing to us. And when we go for version 2, or version 2012, Whatever we call it. Oh, sorry, version 2014. <laughs> I'm stuck with some company, so they are very funny. <laughs> version 2014, when we go for this version, right, we will let you know and come and tell you what we have in mind. But uh, just want you guys to think about what data means to you and how can we do more around it to uh, create more uh, creation. Okay? So, pumping, very important. Okay, with, now, I mean, with that, I'm just going to end off. Anyone got any other questions? Okay, for those who still don't get what I'm saying, right? Go check out Project Nimbus or ORG. Yes? Okay, uh, all the data you have right now in Project Nimbus, right? Most of them are stale, unfortunately. But if you want to actually check it out, how we actually do some of our, our, our protocol or whatever, right? Um, go forth and use it for, I think, uh, testing purposes. <laughs> If you want some interesting data, you want a live one, right? I'm more than happy to connect you with the current data owners. All right. And a side note, uh, for those who actually play around with Project Nimbus, right? It's actually based on a protocol called ODATA. Okay. Hit this uh, URL, uh, O D A T A, ODATA.org. So that's the protocol we base off for how you exchange your data. Okay. Uh, anyone who's interested can reach out to me later. I'm more than happy to connect you with the data. If not, uh, where is the organizers? Are we ready for lunch? Okay, so this is Mario. Just want to share with you a big, quick and easy, good, bad and ugly. And please have more fun with it. Huh? <laughs>